KFI AM 640. Bill Carroll, how you doing? I drove to work today in Burbank. A little bit of rain on the windshield. Just a little bit. Just a little drizzle. It was nice to see. And I got back from my vacation two weeks ago. It was hot and humid and raining all the way from LAX through the valley. Rain. Rain. And in fact, before I got back, people told me it rained for days. My lawn is even green again. So ever since we declared there was a drought, it seems like it just rains. And then there's El Nino out there cooking up in the Pacific Ocean. The water's getting warm. That always means rain, right? They say they were saying it could even be a record El Nino. So, you know, I've kind of I'm kind of kicking back thinking the drought will soon be over. Except it might not be. That's we're hearing now. There's a couple of things that may combine to disappoint people like me who are hoping I can shower as long as I want because there's a drought buster out there. And it has to do with something else we've been talking about on the show and in Southern California the last year or so, the blob. So we have El Nino versus the blob. It sounds like a great uh, Japanese horror movie. I can already see the special effects. So to talk to us about all of that, we have Bill Patzer, a climatologist with NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratories. And he's the guy we've talked to before who's measuring all those ocean temperatures very precisely. He knows this stuff. Inside now. Thanks for talking to us again. We appreciate it, Bill. Good morning. Pleasure to be with you this morning. So, before we talk about El Nino versus the Blob, let's let's make sure we uh, recognize these two adversaries. So, let's go back to basics a little bit, if you could. Just uh, treat me like I'm stupid. It's always a safe bet, Bill. Uh, and tell me what is El Nino and what's happening with it right now. Well, every four to ten years, we have an unusual warming in the tropical Pacific due to a relaxation of the trade winds, which normally sweep water across the Pacific and pile it up off Asia. But sometimes all that water sloshes back towards the Americas, has a very big impact on the jet stream patterns which deliver our winter rainfall, if we ever get it. And right now we see a pattern that's as large as anything we've seen going back to 1997. Remember the great... Godzilla El Nino, Mm -hmm. the wet winter of 1998. Yeah, and the freezing rainstorms up in the northeast and the blackouts, and it was was tough. Well, you know, we got our fingers crossed here in the American West, especially in California, because we're on our knees with this drought, so Mm -hmm. a wet winter would definitely be sweet. Yeah. So what do we know what causes this uh, warm water to kind of bounce back and collect? Do we know what the mechanism is, or it's just uh, the natural flow of things? Yes, it's a large natural cycle when uh, too much heat piles up in one part of the Pacific. Eventually, that has to release itself. And that's what we see with El Nino. And uh, what it will do, it will slosh back along the equator from Asia back to the Americas. And uh, this is a very natural thing. We've seen it for thousands of years, the uh, great El Nino uh, events which uh, which have a big impact not only on California but all over the world. Mm. Bill Patzer is a climatologist with NASA JPL and he measures these things and studies them. And okay, so uh, we're going to get to El Nino versus the blob, but what is the blob? This is something I, I don't remember hearing about until fairly recently, like in the last year. That's another ocean thing that's going on that can influence weather as well, isn't it? Well, for the last four to five years, we've had a pattern in the atmosphere during the winter, very high pressure ridge in the Gulf of Alaska, which has sent the jet stream far north, kept it out of the west, and uh, of course then it plunged down into the Midwest and the Northeast. So for the last few winters, we've been extremely warm and extremely dry in the west, where they've just gotten blasted with large blizzards and frigid weather in the east and the midwest. And the the blob essentially is a large area of warm ocean temperatures that essentially lock this pattern in. Because that, that, that it's, it's influencing the air that flows above it in a way that doesn't let the pattern go back to what would be a more normal kind of weather pattern. Yes, rather than uh, what we really wished for the last few winters are these nice cold wet storms out of the north pacific it's driven those storms far to the north and they've plunged down into the midwest and the east coast of the united states and uh, 
the net effect is is that we've had some very, very warm and extremely dry winters. I'm looking at a couple of uh, illustrations here. One is from November 1997, which was the last big El Nino year, and you can see warm global temperatures. They're depicted as kind of reddish right across a very kind of thin line, actually, along the equator. And there's a little bit of red around the Baja Peninsula, a little bit of red, so beyond, you know, north of of the uh, the equator. Now I'm looking at July 2015. I see that same red line. It maybe is not as thick and intense yet, but you would probably tell me it's early in the year, right, that it's growing? Well, it's building right now, right. and uh, the, the great hope we have here, it will intensify and uh, replicate or duplicate the winter we saw in 1998. Right, but what's different about this picture compared with November 1997 is instead of just a little bit of hot water around the Baja Peninsula, the Pacific Ocean looks really warm right up the California coast, right up into Canada. There's Is that the blob I'm looking at? Exactly. In the Gulf of Alaska off northern Canada right. and the coast of Alaska. And uh, that's been associated with a very, very dry pattern in the west. Okay, so... Now we have this one pattern around the equator that means wet for us and another that means dry. And we're talking about how they interact and what it means for California. And it may not be good news. When we come back, we're going to talk about that, about the blob versus El Nino. And uh, we're hearing it might not be quite as hopeful for California's drought as we were kind of expecting. Bill Patzer is with us. He's a climatologist with NASA JPL, and we'll finish that conversation coming up in a few minutes. 